everyone, and welcome to another episode of Sit Down with Shani. Now, I've got a very special guest today, and this member of Magpie's Netball, I was lucky enough to play with in my last year. We do have today the amazing, magnificent Melissa Bragg. Hey, Sean. Hey, Braggy. How are you going up there? Very, very good. Thanks. How are you going in Melbourne? Do you know what? Not too bad. 116 cases today. We're on the way down. And so I might even be able to leave home soon. Who Hopefully. knows? <laughs> Hopefully. Can you sneak me on a private jet plane and fly me up to the Sunshine Coast with you? Yeah, I'll do my best. <laughs> yeah. Get up, Rob. Australian. <laughs> yeah. Tell Rob I'm after another contract to get me out of uh, the Melbourne winter. I think he'd jump at that. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't think he would. He's seen how many <laughs> skills I've lost uh, over this time. Yeah. Maybe you can run through centre with your footy running skills. Yes! Oh, my <laughs> God. I think that we would have the best centre pass partnership going around because my arms would cover the whole centre pass anyway. <laughs> and you could just get all the high balls that are coming over the top. <laughs> um, but no, ser oh, in all seriousness, you, you've been away for how many weeks now? It's been four or five weeks? I reckon it's coming up to five. So two in quarantine and then three um, out of quarantine, which has been much nicer. Much nicer. Being able to have some free time, some space. Are you allowed to go to the shops or what have you been able to do in your spare time? Yeah, so um, we've got a fair reasonable amount of freedom. Um, we just can't go to big, like crowded places. Um, obviously no AFL games or anything like that. Um, but the restrictions have just tightened up a little bit again with a few cases popping up um, around Queensland. So we're back to wearing masks in the supermarket and stuff like that. But um, yeah, much more freedom than definitely what is allowed in Victoria at the moment. And yeah, I, I feel like we can't really complain about it too much. <laughs> Yeah, and just some tips on the mask wearing, being down here in Melbourne. Just get some good exfoliation. I've really started to break out down around the chin region. So, you know, just be wary of, uh, of that. Yeah, I'll have to um, definitely get better at that because I don't, <laughs> I don't wash my face. I'm not oh! the girl, girl. I'm like, a bit of water, she'll be right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I think you might be the luckiest human alive because your skin is just delicious, which is the most oddest word to use for your skin. <laughs> but, um, I wish that I could do the same. But, but we were chatting earlier. I know that you feel like you've got a bit more freedom being up there in Queensland and it's sunny and beautiful. But, you know, it must still be tough. You're away from your partner, Jai. How's the long distance going for you? Because being from Melbourne, you probably haven't done long distance before. No, um, yeah, definitely a new challenge, but I think that it's just also really important to, yeah, as you said, appreciate the fact that we are away. We know that we're really lucky, but I think also being able to connect, um, you know, we're able to call on FaceTime and ring basically um, every night, which has just been a really, um, a really good key for us, I suppose, to just keep connected. Um, yeah, because people think we're up here on a bit of a holiday and stuff, but we are actually quite busy and then it can get to the end of the day and I haven't even spoken to him. So it is great to be able to, yeah, definitely see his face on FaceTime, but also same with my family, same with my friends, definitely being connected um, through social media and stuff like that definitely helps. Yeah, and distance does make the heart grow fonder. So <laughs> there'll be lots of love when you get home, I'm sure. <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully. No, he's been great. He, it was his birthday the other day as well. So that was a bit tough um, being away from him, but he's been sending me up stuff. So I can't, I can't complain. <laughs> oh, we love that. I love presents. Yeah, it's a nice surprise. Molly's not happy. She's waiting for some presents from her boyfriend every time oh, we get what? one. She's like, Cameron, what are you doing? Where's mine? So <laughs> um, yeah, it's a little bit of a battle in our room at the moment, but yeah, no, good yeah. fun. Yeah. Um, what are they? Are they still called the Sweepers? What are the boyfriends called? The Magpie boyfriends? Oh, I don't know. We need to come up with a name. Yeah, um, you do. Because the they were the handbags, I think. But, um, you know, whatever suits best. 
Yeah, we and need so to not the other wags, the hubs and the handbags. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but before coming up, you you are a teacher. You're obviously working as a teacher. Uh, have you been able to work remotely, or have you had to step aside? So I was just planning on doing um, casually teaching this year. So I actually gave up my contract last year um, and just focused on sort of being a training partner and being in this environment as much as I could and giving netball a red hot crack. Um, just so that, yeah, if I didn't end up getting a contract at the end of the day, I'd know that I'd given it everything. So um, yeah, same as last year, was just planning on doing some relief teaching this year, which I have not worked one day this year, which has been um, quite challenging. I would definitely love to be able to get back into school, but um, yeah, during the pre-season block, we're in at the club every day, which obviously makes it quite hard to get back to school in time. Um, and then when we had less days on and some days off, that's when the whole um, COVID crisis started to happen, I suppose, and they went into remote learning and there's no real need for relief teachers. So yeah, that's definitely been challenging and I definitely miss it, but hopefully, um, yeah, able to get back in at some stage, maybe later this year. Yeah, well, hopefully we can get all the schools back and, and get you back into some work because it's so great as an athlete having that balanced lifestyle. But also so great that, as you said, you've been able to put this time into netball. And speaking of which, you are a coach as well. What about your teams um, back? Obviously, they're back in Melbourne and they're not training. Are you able to do anything remotely with them? Are you missing that side of it? How are you going? Um, yeah, so they're actually, they're based in Geelong. So they're in stage three lockdown and only recently got put back into that stage three. So they actually were back at training for a little bit. Again, um, with the restrictions around SSN and netball, I didn't actually get to go into training, which was quite um, challenging because they are, um, they're a great bunch of girls. There's, oh, there was about 50, a couple of them have dropped out in the last couple of weeks just with the whole, again, coronavirus situation. But mm. I'm definitely missing being around them. Um, we've, we still coach them on Zoom. So um, a couple of clashes with games and our trainings and stuff. So I haven't been able to jump on too much. But, um, yeah, planning to jump on as often as I can and do some stuff with them because they are a great bunch of girls and I definitely miss coaching them. Yeah, but they would be so proud of you and I bet that they would be just so excited being able to watch you play on TV. So you're a huge inspiration to all of us, but um, particularly those girls, of course. And so teaching, coaching, you seem just to be a huge people person. Like, what do you love? Are they similar? Do you just love giving back to them? Do you love what you get from them? Like, what is it about the, that teaching, coaching environment that you enjoy? Um, I think for me, anyone will tell you and probably Molly will tell you that I don't stop talking ever. Um, so I probably being able to talk when I want is, um, you know, my ideal. But also I think for me, like the biggest part is just being able to help um, people. Obviously teaching, um, I do PE health and some science. So much more... Um, human body related um, and being able to educate people in that sense. I really, really enjoy and keeping people active. But from a coaching point of view, I think that I like seeing the girls progress through their pathways. Um, everyone's really different. They're all at different stages of their netball, um, but also being able to make them well-balanced people and not focusing too much on netball and making sure they're doing well at their school as well. So I think probably being teacher and a coach helps me a, like be able to do that um but yeah also passing on the knowledge that I have as well and hopefully being able to get these girls to you know the level that they want to achieve a lot of them are trying to get into um their state league and are trying for state teams and stuff so hoping that a couple of girls are going to be able to do that as well yeah and yeah, I just need to say that absolute dream boat to interview. I don't know if there's anyone that talks more than you, except for maybe me. Um, so for anyone listening to this interview, you might want to fast forward 45 minutes because we'll still be going. <laughs> <laughs> and we were in the same team together. It was the exact, the exact same. Um, but I must say, just to give a bit of insight about you, Mel, to our viewers today, that, you know, I loved even when I was playing alongside you and you coming into the team, 
that you were so great at being able to direct and see what was happening out on that court, whereas a lot of new players coming into a team wouldn't have had the confidence to do that. So it's definitely a natural gift that you have. And do you feel, because that's the pathway that you've had and, you know, trying to make the academies and finally making magpies, is that what inspires you to want to help others to choose that path? Um, I think for me as well, like, it hasn't been easy. Like, it hasn't been easy to get to this level. And there's definitely times where I don't want to say that I've given up, but I'd sort of doubted whether I was ever going to make it to an elite level. And it didn't really become my focus. And I stepped away. I didn't step away from netball, but didn't make a couple of teams and focus on teaching. So I think that just, I suppose, having those challenges along the way and it not being just an easy, smooth ride has been able, like, yeah, then I've been able to help girls, like, when they haven't made a team or if they're disappointed because something hasn't gone the way that they planned. Um, I think just being able to have those life experiences as well um, and being able to share that with them definitely helps. Uh, and it's such a huge part of the netball journey, I think, especially because a huge part of netball is the bench player as well and working so hard to be able to get there. Um, so many of us, I think, that have made it, have had that moment of should we quit and it's after you overcome that hurdle. So I think for them to be able to have you as a role model, to be able for you to push them in that part where they might leave is just a huge influence and we're going to have so many great netballers because of that. Um, but speaking of which, this year has honestly just been a breakout year for you. You know, you've done your time for the Magpies the last couple of years. You're now getting there out there consistently on court. On the weekend, you had five deflections, four games, three intercepts. Like, you are just nailing that spot in that position. Are you just feeling so much more confident every time that you go out there? Um, I think for me... Um, I suppose being around the group for the past couple of years as a training partner, I've been able to really sit back and absorb the information um, that the girls have around me. So players like April, yourself, um, Braz, Jeeva, Maddie, like the list goes on, but everyone in that back end has um, just obviously a wealth of knowledge and I've been able to learn so much from all of those players along the way. But I think as well, just being able to be settled. Um, I think that the first couple of weeks up here were a bit challenging and, you know, finding our feet. But I think now settling in and having a routine, but also, um, yeah, having that core group of girls now together and we're able to just focus on a couple of things has definitely helped. But, yeah, I think that it's... Yeah, it hasn't been easy and, um, yeah, definitely, hopefully, still building. Absolutely. And it's one thing to learn that knowledge, but it is a completely different skill to be able to apply it. So to see you out there applying it, like I know personally, I'm just so proud of you. Um, it's just awesome. So keep taking that confidence and running with it because you're just doing an amazing job. So, Swifties on the weekend, so close, two goals. I thought you were going to knock them down off their pedestal. Um, but you must still be so proud of, of that performance. How's the team going? Yeah, I think it's a bit of a tough one. Um, obviously, we're really happy with um, our improvements from the last game, but also incredibly disappointing and even a little bit frustrating to know that we we were so close to being able to take the four points in that game and to get a win, but they're all still learnings for us. I think that, as I said, we're hopefully still building and we're building those connections and they're getting stronger each week, but yeah, still, um, yeah, very happy in terms of our progression, but still isn't just quite enough just yet. Do you know, because obviously it seems so close to just getting, you've got so many new members in your team and being able to get them to click. What do you feel that, like it is just to get, to be able to push and get over the line in the next couple of games? Yeah, as you said, it's a very new group. I think it's about 50% turnover from the previous year. So I think for us, it is just also being experienced enough to know um, how to win. I think that we've been in um, that position a couple of times this year and a lot of our results have shown that we've had opportunities to, you know, jump 
like jump the line and be in front of teams, but we've let them slip away from us. So I think that once we get that feeling of, okay, this is how, this is how we win and this is how we hold a lead because we definitely had an opportunity in that Swiss game. We were up by maybe six or seven. It may have even been eight. So, and let them come back into the game. So just, you know, again, experiencing that, um, learning from it and then building, building on it and hopefully not letting it happen again. Absolutely. Well, as I said, you've got games coming up. So you've got Swifts, Giants and uh, Fever coming up over the next couple of weeks. So hopefully, um, you know, we'll all be at home behind you rooting for you all to, to get over the line in those games. As you were saying, you've got so many young and new players. Who has impressed you this year being able to step up into this environment? Honestly, I cannot decide because I think that everybody has done an amazing job. Um, you know, there's Jody, there's Molly, um, Naya, even Emma coming in as well. Have I missed anyone? <laughs> so um, amazing. There is, there is, well, and, that, and that's the thing that everybody that's come in um, has been able to slot in, um, able to prove that they're capable. Um, you know, we're all talented enough to be out there on court. So I don't feel like there's necessarily one person that's outshining another. I think that everybody out there is, um, you know, learning and completing their role. And again, hopefully still getting better as the games go on as well. Amazing. Great work, Braggy. Now, that is the, the serious chat done and dusted. We're now going to move into a little bit of fun. Just to start off with, I was looking at your Instagram. What were you and Molly eating the other day? It looked like an ice cream. But was it an ice cream or did it have the foamy stuff on top? Oh, no, that was Gabby. That was Gabby and I. And oh. it, was, um, it was a Whiz Fizz sherbet um, cone. <laughs> like, oh, Amazing. Yeah, when you're about six, but we were really excited. It brought back a lot of childhood memories. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love eating things like that. They're amazing. Um, uh, I just got really excited by that. I don't know why. But anyway, <laughs> back to the game. Now, your name is Melissa Bragg, obviously. I've said it a thousand times today. Uh, so what we're going to do is play the Bragg game. And so I'm just going to make something up, like it's obviously not true at all. Um, but you have to out brag me and then you're going to go and then I'm going to go. So we're going to go three times. If you out brag me, then I need to then out brag you. But if I can't think of anything better after you've said something, then I have to go, wow. And that means that you've won the game and vice versa. This could Are be interesting. Ready? I'm not creative at all. I've got no creative spark. I've got no creative flair. I am pathetic at things like these. So this is going to be interesting and I hope you look forward to winning. <laughs> well, I can't wait to win. Okay. <laughs> Get your wows ready, lady. All right. So I don't know if you know, but I did a boxing class with Cameron Diaz. Well, I don't know if you know, but I actually took that boxing class. Well, I don't know if you know, but after that boxing class, Cameron Diaz and I got in a fight at a bar. <laughs> I've got nothing. <laughs> yes! <laughs> All right. Okay, now it's your turn. You've got to come up with one. I've got one. Okay. Did you know that in my very first netball game, with Collingwood, I got to play with Shani Layton. Oh my God. Do you know that I am Shani Layton? Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst game. This is actually the worst game. I I've got so in. much fun. Okay, one more, one more. Okay. Um, do you know that I got mentioned in Cardi B's new song? Well, did you know that Beyonce asked me to be in a dance video? Well, <laughs> did you know that I actually turned Beyonce down because I was already doing Cardi B, so I couldn't actually be there with her? Well... <laughs> Take the win! Three from three! 
so bad. All right. You, you can That's be Mel Lake game. and I'm being Shani Bragger. That's a terrible game. Terrible game. Like, come on, don't, don't bag out my games, man. Sorry. I was happy that I didn't have to make the magpie noise because <laughs> oh. I haven't been practicing. <laughs> have you? No, I haven't. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, because you can still make the magpie noise if you want. <laughs> no. no. Oh, yeah. Well, Braggy, thank you so much for today. It was just so insightful into everything that you're going through at the moment, how the team's going, and thank you so much for the laughs at the end and for the win. But at the end of the day, everyone knows I'm pretty good at bragging, so. <laughs> no, thanks, Sean. Thanks for having me. No worries. Good luck, Mel. Bye. Thanks. Bye.